welcome to July's garden tour, full garden tour. So I thought I would bring you around to see what the garden is looking like in July. Some things are looking a little raggedy, so I'll be needing to trim those soon, mainly the super tunias. They have just been exploding in the heat. I'll be cutting back a lot of things here after this garden tour because I'm looking to have them flush out again. They've been performing super well. I think you'll be shocked if you compare from last month's garden tour in June to July, now you'll see it's a huge difference. I also have snapdragons that are just popping, delphiniums, which I thought that they were biennial or would bloom every two years, but they're actually, uh, excuse me, my foxglove, I thought that they were biennials but they're actually perennials, so they'll bloom every year. So I was super excited to see those pop and bloom. And you'll see also, my husband and I were working on digging up the rest of the sod out back because we're hoping to, I'll wait for the motorcycle. <laughs> We're hoping to put in gravel, a gravel walkway, and, and finish the back and be able to put in a greenhouse. And uh, I'm super excited to share along the progress and what it looks like. And I hope you guys like to see this type of content. If you do, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Again, I'd like to do these every month so that we can keep track of the progress of the garden. So here we go. So I figured we could start at our front steps. So this is what the view looks like as you're coming out of the house. I just think it's an absolutely beautiful view now that the foxgloves are going, the snapdragons, and I have one delphinium that survived when I started it from seed. And here's some of the flower boxes. All right, and my husband just finished watering the lawn. We're still working on the lawn. It's a work in progress, but nonetheless, it's something. And I know this light might be pretty harsh, but we're going to work with it. So here are the super tunias. They're just exploding. And you'll see that they're just climbing up this rose bush. And I have some Veronica there, pincushion flowers that I also need a deadhead. I have lots of deadheading to do. And then this is probably one of my favorite views, the view down the fence, as you'll see. And then from the front door, and it's just a really pretty vista. The super tunias, all of my snapdragons, and then way in the distance are my poppies. I think you could probably tell what my favorite color is. It's pink. Just get a closer view. And I love how the super tunias are actually covering in to the walkway. And they have most certainly created a hedge, I would say. Look how beautiful. And it is a peaceful Saturday morning here in Portland, Maine. I'll just walk down. Just hopefully you can see the poppies. But I'll wait to collect those seeds once they have finished. And then let me turn around to give you this view. Isn't that beautiful? So I fertilize my super tunias once a week. They'll be due for a fertilizing today. Actually, I'll do that later today. And they are just loving it. And I think also the foxglove are really loving the coverage too, the shade. And this right here is just one plant. That is one supertunia. 
Isn't that incredible? So again, I think I'll be shearing these back just, just a bit. That way it'll help to flush out, I'm hoping, new blooms in the center. That's the goal. And then I'll be cutting back some of my snapdragons and hopefully get a few more blooms out of them. And then I don't know if, how well you can see, but this, I believe, limelight hydrangea tree, it is just filling up with buds. So we are gonna have a spectacular show here. And the pollinators are just so happy here. Those window boxes are performing so well. I'll spend some time, maybe this afternoon, and just be deadheading, and just deadhead everything that needs it. So we'll just walk over here. And then this is the view of the side garden. And you'll see the hedge of super tunias has formed. And I planted them on center three feet apart. So from where I planted one, I measured to the center of the other one, and that was three feet. And you'll see I have a lot of we weeding to do underneath. I was kind of hoping that they would be overgrown to the point where I wouldn't have to necessarily do all that weeding. So I was hoping that they would be overgrown more this way, which they probably will be in a couple of weeks to the point where I won't have to weed under there anymore. But I also have to add that to the list. So, let's take that in. And I'll show you, we have some amaranth growing, some more dahlias, and foxglove. This side is a little bit behind, I think because they don't get as much sun as the other, other side of our cottage fence. And then you'll see we have some autumn joy sedum that's a, just about to bloom, probably in a few more weeks. Incredible hydrangeas, prairie fire crab apple, which is doing well. Oh, and we have some golden finches that are just, I don't know if you can see, but on the sunflowers and loving the little bird bath. I fill it with clean water every day so that they can have a nice little bath or a drink. And Harden what it looks like in the back, but again, we are working on digging up the rest of the sod to finish the rest of the rest of the garden with gravel, and then hopefully be getting a greenhouse this fall. There you go. And then my neighbor gifted me this hosta, which was so sweet. So I'll be putting that in the back of the house here soon. She said it was an elephant ear hosta. So I'm not 100% positive just yet, but I'll take her word. And then the hydrangeas. And some more super tunias that I'll be cutting back a little bit. In the hanging basket, it looks a little leggy. But you'll see my pink mink clematis is just covered, covered in blooms. It is really happy here. And I got this trellis from Gardener Supply and it's pretty heavy duty and I believe it's six feet, six feet tall. And you'll see my Globemaster alliums, those have gone by. I plan to cut them and, I mean, I plan to cut them 
and save their seeds but I think some of them may be past the point I think they've already dropped their seeds which is fine because I would like them to seed there so I got to get that done today so I figured I would do a garden tour to show you what what they look like right now first before I do cut them back and save them and what I'll do is I'll cut them at the base because I do want to use them for decoration but cut them at the base just leave a little nub so I know where they are this fall if I plant any more and then I'll put them upside down inside some paper bags and then let them fully dry out and then you just shake them and the seeds release so let me just show you the amaranth and the dahlias I did just pinch off this one pinching off just means essentially trimming off the the leader or some of the blooms so that way it can start to bush out and send out more energy into more blooms but look at this amaranth that's so pretty I hope to use these in some cut flower arrangements and then this one whoop. I think this one's my favorite this is called love lies amaranth and I that one I I don't know if it's coral bells I'll have to double check and put that on the screen what that is okay so let's actually go into the garden I do have to point out the sweet potato vine Oh, we have a bird on top of the sunflowers. <laughs> Again, I do have to do some deadheading of some roses and everything. I did harvest some of my sweet pea blooms this morning as well. And I have a giant sunflower. That's got to be at least like 10 feet tall, 8 feet tall, something like that. So here are my, here's the gold master alliums that I'll be cutting back and hopefully saving whatever seeds are left. And then here, you'll see that we actually have some sweet pea seeds starting. So. We don't actually eat these, but we will be saving them for next year. So that's really exciting. And then the corn is going. And here I dug up the ranunculus on actually both sides. And then I do have some mammoth sunflowers, mammoth, <laughs> mammoth sunflowers that are still standing. I'm I have some really determined squirrels so I have to put down some type of protection whether it be like fencing like that or some frost guard which I just use as protection and I did plant in some fun things in here too so I do have a mix of sunflowers in both beds but then I think I planted in some lettuce and a few other fun things in this bed and then in the other one I planted in some baby boo pumpkins so we'll have a lot of fun with that and these sunflowers that I started early they're dying back so I think I'll let them be and just let the birds harvest them the borad the borage I'll have to cut back I think uh, and then we have the corn on the side so it will be an experiment to see how that turns out okay now this part of the garden is looking a little a little uh, well it's in progress <laughs> but I do have a bunch of weeding to do here and I have to plant this little butterfly bush 
think it's called Little Pugster. But everything seems to be doing its thing. So I can't really complain about that. So we have some Rutabecchia, some Echinacea Coneflower, Sunflowers, Hydrangea, I love the blue. Salvia, which I did cut back some of them, but then I have to cut back one more that I was letting finish blooming. This is one of my favorite views from here. So if you could just imagine this gravel continuing here in a greenhouse, little seating area, and then a view, this view here. That's the goal. And I don't think I went over what's in the containers, but we have a wisteria, American wisteria my neighbor gave me, pumpkin, I think it's called Jaredell, it's a white pumpkin, lavender, gladiolas, more sunflowers, sweet peas, of course. Okay, dahlias. That looks like another pumpkin that I planted. <laughs> that says little gem lettuce. And then that one, it just dries out so quickly, so I might have to bring that inside and try again. I was trying rosemary. And then this side, why don't we go around? Oh, and then I have English lavender as a standard. Standard just simply means pruned into like a tree form. And then we have, I like putting incredible hydrangeas in baskets. They're mobile, which I love. And over here, a different kind of sweet pea, still highly fragrant. And then I planted some more corn here. And I just put down some chicken wire fencing to help prevent some squirrels from getting in. Some more corn. And then I can probably take this chicken wire off, but more sunflowers. Carrots. Uh, that is an aster. Anemone. Peas that you can eat. Basil. Another pumpkin. And a giant dahlia, which I do have to water. To water everything here. Okay. So that is the side garden here. Here's the back. We rented a sod cutter, so you'll see like little clumps that we've been working to dig up because the plan is to extend all of this with gravel back here because it's really unused space in my, in my mind. So I'm trying to work on designing, or I've been trying to work on designing a space that has a really good flow and utilizes every square inch because especially in a city garden or a suburban garden, you really have to utilize every square inch. So. There's my wall of uh, Arbovita that I'm gonna extend this fall up to here. But for now, until I get more this fall, I've planted some potatoes that I saved, uh, that I made some seed potato, and uh, also some zinnias that I saved last year. And then we do have the sprinkler going, but I love this. So this we're going to create a walkway gravel walkway we just have to finish putting down some landscape fabric and gravel so here you'll see we have some sod piles and some brush that my husband still needs to load up and haul away and in the back there i have a giant bleeding heart some hookera and a few boxwoods with some here let me try and get over here before i get whoops get wet oh no my fell goes all right, so down here, this might be easier to see. I'm still, whoops, I'm still working on cutting out and defining this area. And of course I still have weeding to do, but my goal in the future is to have this just be 
uh, filled with like hostas and shade to part shade plants. That way I really won't have to focus on weeding back here. And it looks beautiful. I have a giant bleeding heart there. Let me put my pruners away. A giant bleeding heart there, some pucara that has those beautiful pink spikes, uh, some boxwoods that I'm gonna hopefully continue to let them grow and I wanna prune them into balls. So it'll be really nice structure and form that I'd like to just dance around the garden. We have some hostas and I'd like to plant a hosta my neighbor gave me either in here or I want to start working over there somewhere. Well, this is a nice little vista. So you'll see what we're working on, cutting out that sod and continuing it through the front. So it's a nice, a nice walkway. So I hope you can see where I'm trying to go and then grow these beautiful arbovita. I think will be pretty. Oh, I'll wait to go. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, it's pretty wet. <laughs> All right, so we still have some things to clean up and to do. Woo! Like here, I have to finish cutting this out, defining this bed a little bit more. And then these daisies, I have to cut out and move because I think that they're just, they've become so big that they've just flopped. Uh, and I do have, looks like a lily starting. And I love this container. I don't know how well you can see that because of the sun. But the sweet potato vine is just going crazy. And then I have a few buds left on my, my peonies that I need to cut off so that we can still save that energy and send it to the roots. Some weeding to do. Put a beautiful rhododendron that will hopefully get big and just cover up those meters. And my phlox just started blooming. This is called early flamingo, fashion, fashionably early flamingo. It just looks fluorescent. So beautiful. Azalea that I have to deadhead. Whoops. And so now we're back at the front. And I'll have to show you a view of what the house looks like from the front across the road, maybe when it's not in such bright light. Or, you know what, let's just do it now. Let's just do it. So here's Here's what she looks like from the road. Super Tunias are stealing the show. This is definitely one of my favorite views. And I love how I can see it out of our screen door. I don't know how well I showed all of the window boxes. Alright guys, that brings this month's garden tour to a close. I hope you enjoyed seeing what the garden looks like and where we're at and what we're hoping to achieve in the next month and coming months specifically with all of our facade digging up. That is hard work. <laughs> it's really a lot of work, but we have a goal in mind and it's a lot of fun to design and work on a garden space, even if it's small. Uh, it just, 
hope shows that no matter what size your garden, if you're doing container gardening, gardening raised beds, uh, or if you have a little bit more space that you can play around with, um, it just, it's really cool to see the versatility of garden spaces and what you can do with them. And um, I'm really excited to see what we, what we do here and what it looks like next year and uh, a few years from now. We plan to do these every single month. So you can come along with me and see, see, uh, see the progress. So I hope you have enjoyed taking this tour with me to see what a cottage garden looks like in Portland, Maine. So I hope to see you guys soon and thanks for watching. I was on a roll. <laughs> Oh.